Welcome back to another Labu tutorial where today I'm going to show you how to set up your Epson printer from scratch. We'll start with physically setting up the printer, then move into setting a static IP address, and finally end with creating the printer profile in the control panel and testing it out on the POS app. A quick note before we get started, we're going to be setting up this printer with an ethernet cable. If you have a wireless adapter like this, check the description or our YouTube channel for a separate video that will take you through connecting your wireless printer to Wi-Fi. Finally, if you happen to have Epson's TMT887 printer, check out our YouTube channel for a separate setup video as it will vary greatly from what we see here. Alright, let's get started. To physically connect our printer, we're going to need a couple of things. The printer itself, of course, the power cable, an ethernet cable, which should come with your printer, and you should know where your router or your network switch is. Plug the power cable into your printer with the flat part of the cable facing the floor. This will make sure the pins inside the power cable are lined up correctly. Plug one end of your ethernet cable into your printer and the other end into your router or switch. With everything securely connected, turn the printer on and wait. On this printout, you will see an IP address. We're going to need this for our next steps. If you don't get this printout, Take a pen or paper clip and hold down the reset button on the back of your printer for 5 seconds, then let go. You will get a much longer slip of paper with the IP address on it. If you see the numbers 192.168.192.168 or simply none, check out our troubleshooting video on our channel to see how to resolve this. Most likely, you just need to check your ethernet cable and ensure it is securely connected. With the IP address in hand, we can turn to a laptop, desktop, or even an iPad. We need something with a web browser that's also connected to your restaurant's network. Open a web browser and type in the IP address you received from your printer. If you get a warning message, simply ignore it and click advance or proceed anyway. You will then be prompted for a username and password. Enter Epson for the username and the printer's serial number for the password. Once you are logged in, click on TCP slash IP on the left hand side under Configuration. Next to Acquire IP Address, make sure that Manual is selected. For your IP address, change the last number to 200. Each printer you do this with will need its own IP address, so if you assigned your first printer the number 200, make sure your second printer is assigned 201, then your third printer 202, and so on and so forth. You do not want to have two printers with the same IP address, it's only going to cause problems later. With this address set, leave the subnet mask and default gateway as it is, click save, and then reset. Your printer will automatically turn off and back on, we simply need to wait. While that's happening, we can move into our final steps in the Labu control panel. Log into your account and navigate to Settings. Click on Printers slash Technical, then Printers slash KDS at the top. Scroll down to the section also called Printers slash KDS and click the green Add New button. The first setting asks us what kind of printer we are setting up, kitchen or receipt. Kitchen printers receive orders from the point of sale when a server taps on send and are set up in the menu. Receipt printers print customer receipts after a payment has been made. This is also the printer that will be connected to your cash drawer. If you have multiple kitchen or receipt printers, you will need to select a different receipt or kitchen setting for each profile you create. Just like with IP addresses, we don't want two printer profiles with the same setting. Next, give the printer any name you want. Type in the IP address we set in the previous step. For the port number, type in 9100 and select Epson for the printer type. Next, your command set will be determined by which specific printer you are setting up. On the printer, there will be a sticker with a series and model number. The series number starts with the letters TM. If you are setting up the TM U220B printer, this is an impact printer, and it is what you should select for the command set and model. If you are working with any other Epson printer, it will be a thermal printer. In my example, I'm setting up a TM M30 printer. The rest of the settings we see here can be left alone. The only setting that you may consider is image capability. If you want your tickets to print in bigger fonts or you simply want to add your restaurant logo to your receipts, you will need to make sure that Epson Graphics is selected. It's the same setting for all Epson branded printers. Simply repeat this process for each printer that you need to set up. 
When you are finished creating your printer profiles, you should navigate back to your menu and ensure kitchen printers are attached to your menu categories. For receipt printers, you will need to jump back into the POS and reload settings. Then navigate to Functions, Register Functions, and tap on Select Register. Here you will see a list of all of your receipt printers that you can choose from. Simply tap the printer you wish to be connected to and all customer receipts will print from this printer. This also tells the POS which cash drawer to open when a cash transaction takes place. With everything in place, we are now able to test our printers either by sending a practice order to the kitchen or by printing a customer's check from the checkout screen. If you run into any problems during this process, please reach out to our 24-7 customer support team through call, chat, or email. Check out the other videos on our channel, including the troubleshooting your Epson printer, which will take you through some basic troubleshooting you can try on your own.